Often when I'm working with a young person on their spelling, the adult who's with them will lean forward and go, oh, I was never taught that. Why wasn't I ever taught that? That's very interesting. So this is a video for all the adults that weren't taught stuff about spelling, but now they want to explain stuff to kids and they need to understand how the spelling system works. And the important thing to understand is the spelling system has got this bit here is like the orthography, the written, the writing, uh, the spelling and the letters. And this part under here is the sounds in your mouth and also the way that words, longer words are built with word parts like prefixes, suffixes, bases. So here's a fun spelling factoid video uh, to help explain some of those things. And I'm hoping to make a series if I can find time. The first factoid is the sound is often spelt with a letter C before the letters E, I or Y. And examples. Usually teach with examples rather than rules. Children will understand them better and they're, they're gathering data uh, to build their database of how spelling works. And so we have C, I, C, Y. And of course there is an exception in uh, British English. This is a k in skeptic, but Americans have gotten rid of it and made the system very consistent if you speak American English. Uh, if you want to write k before E, I or Y, you have to use K. So otherwise that would be, if you put C there, it would be lice. If you put K there, uh, C there, it would be sept as in intercept. And K, I, K, Y. And we do have words with other vowels after the letter K. Uh, mostly these are pretty recent imports into English, you can see from lots of different languages. This one was originally Latin, was spelt with a C I think, but it's um, now, I went through Middle English and came out the other side with a K. And this one is from Old Norse, which is one of the source languages of English. But apart from that, mostly recent imports. And CK is used after A, E, E, O, A, not after A, E, I, O, U, U, or any of the other vowels. Like, uh, so you can see. These ones, E, U, O, have K after them, not C, K. And also uh, consonants have K after them. So if you see a child writing milk with a C, K, uh, let them know that C, K only goes after one letter vowels and it's A, E, E, O, A, A, E, E, O, A, words. And um, the non-examples, of course, there's always a few non-examples are from Tibetan, Chinese, um, uh, Afrikaans, German, uh, Malay, and that's a made-up word from the 19th century. Origin originally it was hike, as in price hike, and became hoik. And there are also um, two-syllable words that the typical pattern when you have ik, it's not I-C-K, I think it used to be I-C-K, but someone decided to save ink. Uh, it's ik with I-C typically in longer words and sometimes that's a suffix sometimes it used to be a suffix and now it's not but it's still productive as a suffix you can still build words new words with it um, cube is a noun and then cubic is an adjective so you're ch changing adjectives into nouns typically no, sorry nouns into adjectives and then the same pattern also applies to j as in um, gem ge gentle package G-I, G-Y, these ones, it, like in G Egypt and Jim, are ones from Greek. And there are also quite a few non-examples. This, this system is, this um, pattern is not as reliable as the C-E, C-I, C-I, Y one. We have common words like get, girl, give, uh, which kind of cloud the pattern. So um, if you're working with children talking about this pattern, explain that there are more um, non-examples than in the other pattern. And this is J with an A next to a jail. I, for my entire childhood I said gale, my old Melbourne gale. Uh, margarine, a recent word, and veg is short for vegetable. That's why it doesn't run with leg and peg. Uh, if you want to find useful spelling lists that link the sounds and the spellings and the word parts, I'm building on uh, my um, bank of uh, word part uh, lists this year. So then you type spellphabet, CK as in duck, for example, or, you know, whatever the spelling is you want, and then an example word into a search engine. And usually now, they sort of, to me at least, they pop up uh, and I get this sort of thing with spellphabet.com.au. And if you open it up, you'll get lists of words that um, have that sound spelling relationship and not other patterns mixed in that might be confusing. So you can teach the sound and the spelling. Um, you can work out how to organise your curriculum depending on what your teaching sequence is. So I hope that's useful and it helps you to explain uh, and demonstrate in particular, mostly demonstrate, learning by doing, uh, how spelling works to the young people in your life.